Hi everyone, welcome back to our garden. Well, it has finally arrived the time to replace this plastic on the greenhouse. We thought we'd get it done a couple months ago, but as usual, nothing goes as planned. We had called Integrity Sales um, to order some and they said, yes, they still cut it, but it takes about a week. So we said, okay, so we phoned them back with the measurements a couple weeks later and we're informed that they had made a mistake. They don't cut it anymore. We have to order a 50 foot roll, which they thought would take two weeks to get in. We said, that's fine. It was only in July, but it took two months. <laughs> so they finally phoned the other day. It's September the 12th now, Sunday. And on Tuesday, we're gonna go out and keep our fingers crossed that that plastic is the right plastic that we ordered. And so today we're gonna get busy and prepare the greenhouse for that plastic arriving. So come along with us while we do that. First, a little history on this greenhouse. We built it over 25 years ago. It's a hoop greenhouse. Uh, actually, our son Jeff built it. And we had it over in front of the house, but when we added on the addition, we moved it out here into the yard. And it was originally covered in all this PVC paneling, which we've only replaced once, I think, on the ends. And we've gone to plastic on the hoops. It's been a few years since we've replaced this. I can't even remember, five, six, seven years. I think this is the third time we've replaced this plastic. And um, it's a lot cheaper than the, P than the PVC clear paneling, I'll tell you, which ends up to be, I don't even know how much that is anymore, a sheet and you need a lot of 12 foot sheets, whereas the plastic usually cost us, well, a 50 foot roll is 100 and we don't need half of that, so $50 to replace it. Then of course we have to buy the grommets at the end from Lee Valley um, to secure it to the piping. One of the first thing Alan needs to do is replace this green uh, strip of wood that he put down at the bottom of here a few years ago to hold it down, so he's gonna just take those bolts out of there and remove that before we uh, undo the zap straps that hold this down at the ends before we let those go and carefully take off this plastic because we need to use it as a template in our driveway over the new plastic so we know the exact size to make the new one and cut it. Okay, while Alan's gone in the house, I'm gonna take these poles out that we use uh, for the peonies. He said I didn't need to, but you know, I can't see how he's gonna get that green board out of there. He's unbolted it from the PVC piping from the inside, but it'll make his life a lot easier if I just pull out these poles. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I have the peony cut down. I'll take the chives out in a minute. That tie down uh, green strip that was holding that down at the bottom on both sides, they've been removed. Moving on to the next thing. I should point out the reason we're going to replace this plastic this year is because as you can see we've repaired it in a couple spots where it's weathered and also over here down some of these strips it's hard to see but we've actually run repair tape down these these beams this PVC apparently deteriorates plastic so what we're gonna do once it's been removed is we're gonna actually sand these PVC poles down and we're gonna put a coat of paint on them to hopefully stop it from deteriorating the future plastic that we're putting on. Ellen's just gone off to get some uh, TSP and a scrub brush to clean up these green uh, one by twos, I think they were, that he used at the bottom of there. Because what he has done is he's bought some one by four 12 foot long pieces that he's painted white and he's gonna run a reinforcing strip inside right across uh, about where that crease you can see in the middle is up there. Because sometimes when we get a snow load, it, it bows in. So we thought maybe that would stop that from happening, giving it that bit more of a support. So he's gonna paint these boards the same color white. All right, the moment of truth, we're gonna undo these zaps and gently peel this plastic off of this hoop. I 
better get busy working on my end. I'm going to get fired. <laughs> and there we go. There we go. Wait a minute. Whoa, geez. Okay, hold on. Hold on. There we be. Now we can really give that uh, lemon tree a really good trim because it was getting near impossible to get in there and snip that back so it didn't get through the plastic. Wow, it's a good thing we have such a huge concrete driveway to be able to lay this plastic out to dry it out for a few hours before we put it away to use as a template for the new plastic. These lemons that are green are going to get ripe and be yellow by about November, they should be very happy that this is the first time they've ever been exposed to the sunshine. And it might not look it with this other lemon tree over here that's huge, but there are lots of lemons hidden in there and we're gonna get busy and trim all this down. And this little bush that my friend Doreen gave me has got a couple of little limes hidden amongst the branches down there. If you look, you can see them. So that'll be interesting to have limes first time ever. Just a little heads up and a reminder to people who haven't watched my previous videos on these lemons growing out here, they have thorns like right there and they're sharp. You can see them all, thorns and thorns and thorns. You know, they're very sharp and very hard and so far, I haven't had to go get a Band-Aid. The bleeding hasn't been that bad, but I'm gonna be a little bit more careful from now on. Yahoo, we're calling it a day. Alan would have kept going, but he needs more washers, so he can't do the other side. But he does have this board on this side for reinforcing, and I have a lot of those lemon trees cut down all in that area, just that end up there to bring down another foot or two. And um, that's it. We'll go inside, time for supper. We'll get back at it tomorrow. Good morning, we're back and getting working on this greenhouse again. Some of you might have noticed this electrical cord uh, running here and the extension running across here, which I'm just gonna cut loose so Alan can put a coat of paint on these PVC pipes. This is because in the winter time, we cover this lemon tree with a remake cloth and there's actually Christmas lights all through the little lime and the two lemon trees. There's actually Christmas lights which are buried under there and, and a reverse thermostat that when the temperature goes down to about three Celsius, they come on and they supply just enough heat to keep the lemon trees alive. Okay. That's it for today. It's been a long one. The other white board is on over there. Alan's painted those boards that were green across the bottom. He didn't go white, he went green. They've been repainted. Um, I've trimmed the heck out of this lemon tree. It's now trimmed down to a height that's nice and manageable that'll go under the plastic. But you know, as all things go, looking at this old fiberglass, plastic paneling on the ends. It's getting pretty weathered and and breakable when you go to touch it. And so I don't even know with COVID if it's available right now. Could be back ordered like everything else. So we're going to check that out tomorrow and and see if we can get it. And if we can, that'll be a project that we'll do before we replace the plastic. Unfortunately, we are going away to visit with friends camping this weekend that we haven't seen for two years because of COVID. So that's actually good. We'll have a bit of a break and then we'll decide when we get back if we're going to actually be able to replace that plastic at the ends. It'd be a lot easier to cut it in the hoop shape when there isn't this uh, greenhouse plastic on here to try to avoid. So we're in the house. Time for supper. Tomorrow's another day. Finally, we've got a sunny day to get the white paint on these PVC pipes. Monday, of course, it rained. Tuesday, we ran out and got the uh, plastic from Integrity Sales. And they told us it was 12 foot. We took the truck, 
They even went and checked, got there, and it was six, so we could have taken the car. Well, uh, hard to find good help. Anyways, um, Alan, the slave driver today, there's a little window of sunshine, so we're out here getting this paint on before we take off tomorrow. Well, here he is, hard at it. Alan's busy removing all this corrugated plastic from both ends of this greenhouse. We ended up buying six of these 12 foots. Uh, we only needed four 12s and two 10s, but they only came in 12 and they're the polycarbonate, which is twice the price, but it should last way longer. And Alan's over there, like I said, removing all the old stuff. So hopefully by tomorrow we will be able to install this new, this new panels. Oh God, okay. <laughs> Breaks off pretty easily, it's so brittle, eh? Did I mention there are over 200 of those screws in that fiberglass? We counted them to so we could buy new ones to replace them. Well, here we go. First piece is on. It's always the toughest. You're trying to make sure it's good and level. I'm trying to remember what you used to secure it. Forgot that we had to pre-drill the holes on the PVC so we could get the screws into it, which he did. Worked fine on the two by fours, but PVC was a different story. And now he's working on what the heck is the best thing to use to cut this at a nice angle. So. We'll keep at it, and it's just about the end of the day, and probably have to start on it again tomorrow. These extra pieces of this easy border recycled rubber came along very handy for balancing the panels on top of to try to get them level. Such a decision. Does the jigsaw work the best? He put away his Dremel. That was too tough to use. And now he's switching to some kind of an angle grinder. He's going to get his protective glasses. So we'll see what he ends up to use for cutting this. He's put this behind strap so he doesn't cut into the PVC so he stays on the outside of it. So we'll see how it goes. Wow, nothing seems like the perfect solution to cut these polycarbonate corrugated panels. We've tried tin snips, X-Acto knives, uh, jigsaw, uh, saws, different things. Alan's tried his angle grinder and now he's gone in to do some kind of other blade thing he's gonna try. Phew, it's hard work. So far we've gotten two of the panels up. We're done for the day. Too tired to even say too much in this part of the video. Um, we'll show you how we ended up cutting it tomorrow. This end is totally done except for that little wee bit at the top. We'll use some scraps to finish off when we get to that when we get to the end if we ever do and we also got started on this end we have one sheet across the bottom there we decided to do it a little bit differently we're going to do the door separately we cut the panels so we'll get back working on that tomorrow unless of course it rains like they say it's going to we'll see bye for now actually I'm kind of hoping for rain tomorrow because I've got a lot of tomatoes that need to be stewed down and I'm going to try making them into ketchup. And I've got a lot of apples there and even more in the fridge that I need to get uh, processed and maybe make some uh, apple pies. So let's see if it rains tomorrow. It'll be a nice break. At the end of the day, all those panels, those old panels from the greenhouse, crushed down. They were so brittle, they went into these two boxes. So, I mean, they are heavy, but uh, not a lot uh, left of that paneling. And we'll wait and see what happens when we take it to the garbage dump, whether it's classed as recyclable or garbage. Remains to be seen. I'm not sure if I mentioned previously that where it runs up to this PVC, we actually had to pre-drill and then put the screws through this polycarbonate into into the posts.
All right, we had another little window of opportunity with the sun out here earlier. So we got two more sheets on this end of the greenhouse. Now it has become very overcast, as you can see from the sky, and a little bit of rain's coming down. So time to stop again. It's the end of the day anyway. It's four o'clock. Um, all we have left to do then for this uh, polycarbonate uh, paneling is to do the door and these peaks up here, which in other years we've never bothered, but we've got enough little pieces left. We're actually going to do right up to the peak this time. So here we are again, sunny day, working on this greenhouse. And one of the grandchildren, Alana, came walking through this door frame and kicked the wood and it was rotten. So rather than replace this whole frame, again, we're going to pull out the PC wood petrifier and Alan's gone to go get it. And we will squirt a bunch into that spot, just like we did with the rotten stairs and fix it, hopefully, so we don't have to replace the whole frame. And once we get the uh, panels on, it'll hold it good and solid. Okay, another project saved the day by the PC Petrifier Wood Hardener. We've got it well coated in there, soaked in. So it should just harden that wood up just like a rock. It saved us having to rebuild the frame of this door. Just a little heads up. Normally when we cut this paneling, we've run a black felt across to make the line so Alan could cut it and used Goo Gone. And it's taken it right off. But you know what? It's not coming off so easily this time and I'm actually having to soak it in the Goo Gone and then use this scrubber to try to get those black lines off. I mean, some of you might, if you're building this greenhouse, just leave those black lines. You're not gonna notice, but I'm a little anal that way. So I like to have it perfect. So anyway, I just keep on trying to scrub off this black felt. Okay, the door is all done. Um, in retrospect, instead of using the black felt, if we'd known it was going to be that hard to get it off of this product, we probably should have used, um, or we could have used, uh, masking tape, green masking tape, and ran it along, and then it just would have pulled off. It would have been a lot easier than scrubbing off that black felt. Right, here we go. It's not a bad day, it's overcast, but it's not windy. So we've managed to get back out to this greenhouse to try to get um, more of it finished. Uh, we've gone through and I have picked every lemon that was left on the trees. And now we have absolutely scads of them that will be getting ripe in the next few months. We have also, um, followed the trail of all these Christmas lights to make sure they were all working and they are. So now they're plugged into the reversed thermostat down at the back. And I have cleaned up all the ground around the lemon tree and the lemon trees and the lime. And so we're ready to haul the uh, greenhouse plastic out into the driveway and measure it and see about getting it onto this roof. The nights have gotten down to two Celsius, getting close to freezing. So we need to get, hurry up with that. But right now I need to get in the house and make the stuffing for the turkey because it is Thanksgiving day here in Canada and I need to get that turkey in the oven. So we'll be back as soon as we finish doing that. Okay, this is the plan. Hopefully it works. We have this huge big tarp laid out in the driveway. And now we're going to go get the old uh, greenhouse plastic that we took off and lay it on top of this as a template. The reason we laid this down was just because plastic's a little bit uh, staticky and it, and it was better just to have something underneath on top of the concrete. All right, we finally have our 12 by 20 foot piece of plastic cut. It's actually 12 foot two, so we have a little bit of edge there to um, roll under for when we put all these grommets down the new piece. 
Um, the plastic ended up to be, we thought it was 12 wide. And actually the roll, it was 50 feet wide by, ah, God knows, 12 or 13 or 14. Anyways, we had extra plastic. That's up there at the end. Another um, 12 by 30 piece that we'll probably list on News Victoria. Anybody else has a greenhouse that they need to have covered. And we'll, this, now the sun comes out. Of course it does. Anyway, we're going to clean up this and then work on folding down the edges to get the grommets in place. Good morning. Well, we have the plastic laid out. It's a little bit windy. Oof, we got it weighted down in places. We're holding it down here with the easy border thing. It's heavy. Um, these are the eyelets that we're using for this uh, greenhouse plastic that pound in. Alan's pre-cutting the holes with a hole cutter that's a little bit smaller and then pressing the bottoms up through the double layers of plastic. These self-sealing eyelets are, are for plastic or canvas. We purchased them at Lee Valley, Canada. I see they're made in Taiwan, so they're probably available everywhere. Um, 10, 10 to a package, 7 to 90 plus tax. They came to about 850 something each. And um, we needed 40. We purchased five packs just to make sure we didn't run out. And so um, I'll probably just return this package because we now we have an extra one and every single one was perfect. Now we're just snapping the tops onto them. And then ever so gently pounding them down into place. And there we go. We're working both sides at the same time. We just keep moving back and forth and then pulling the plastic over top of the uh, saw horses with boards on top of them. So we'll just continue until we get all the grommets in. Well, we've reached the halfway point because these two dots side by side means that it's the top of the hoop on the PVC. So that means we're about half finished doing this. That's great. And in just a minute, I'll show you how Alan actually cuts the holes with his hole cutter. And he makes them just a wee bit bigger than this hole cutter, so it's easier to go through the grommets. Oops. <laughs> Got away from you there, hon. Uh -huh. There we go. Not sure if I mentioned yesterday that before we put that old uh, greenhouse cover away, we actually poked through the grommet holes and made felt markings on this new sheet. So we knew exactly where we needed to punch the holes for the new grommets. All right, this tarp is now all laid out here in the driveway, face down. This is the plan. We're gonna roll it from left and right in, take it in one long sheet and drape it over the greenhouse PVC poles and then unroll it. So we'll, now we better grab this before the wind takes it away. Okay, let's get to work. So far, so good. We got it thrown over the top and unrolled, tied down partially at that end, pulled up at the top there, and now we're gonna work on this end and stretch it out and work our way down. Okay, that's about it for the day. It's only about 1.30 in the afternoon, but we have the greenhouse uh, plastic on. We've got it loosely secured because it's gonna stretch over the next few days, especially if the sun comes out and it warms up. So we're gonna wait to really secure it down tightly for at least three or four or five days. And as you can see, the sky up there has gotten really black. <laughs> so it's gonna start raining in a minute. So good thing we got uh, done what we wanted to get done today. So we'll see how it goes in the next few days and what the weather's like to get this just to stretch out a bit so we can finish this project. <laughs> 
after we do get it secured down, then we'll be able to just, that green board along the bottom here is just loosely sitting there with a couple of loose screws in. We'll pull it off and then secure it over top of the plastic to hold down the bottom. Couple of days of rain, a little bit of sunshine. Plastic is pulling right to the ends. We're just working on tightening it up, but it's coming down here very nicely. Looking good over here. Looking tight. Whew. That's as good as it gets. All right, now Alan's going to go and get the uh, tools to put that green board across the bottom again to hold it down. These green boards to help hold down this plastic at the bottom have now been all attached and screwed through the PVC uh, to the other side and tightened with a bolt. This side as well is all done. Looks good. Should keep it nice and snug for the winter. And hopefully it'll be another, I think it's been more than 10 years actually since we've replaced this greenhouse plastic. It'd be interesting to know how long it is, how often the commercial greenhouses have to replace theirs. This is it. We are done. Alan's just cutting off the uh, zap straps that he used to tie onto those grommets and everything's done secured down um, October the 16th today we started on September the 12th just took over just a month We're a little bit slow but then we had a lot of days of rain in between um, now we just have to cover all those lemon trees. The weather's actually warmed up. It's gone back to about 11 or 12 at night, so we don't need to have the Christmas lights coming on, which they won't until it gets much colder and they come on automatically. And when that gets cold again, we'll start covering them with the remake cloth to keep that heat in. Just to give you a little example, here's a piece of the remake cloth or a chunk of it that we'll use when we're when it gets cold enough and then we'll just we have lots of this remake cloth and we'll drape it all over the plants over the lemon trees and over the lime tree and that will keep it help it keep the heat in when the christmas lights need to come on when it gets too cold all right i'm gonna sign off again this is a 12 by 12 hoop greenhouse that we have replaced the plastic on this year uh the base of it uh is two by sixes I do believe and then our son Jeff when he built it he used PVC piping to form the hoop and there's a lot of uh, uh, plans for greenhouses like this on the internet that you can look at to get the sizes but I hope you've enjoyed our video of our struggle with <laughs> recovering it and uh, until next time you guys take care and stay safe